So today the data science incubator continues this series about Git from the terminal. And what you're looking at here is uh, RStudio Cloud. I'm using that uh, so that you know you can reproduce what I do. And uh, you know the lesson we are covering uh, probably we're going to be finishing today. But um, yeah, what um, I want to um, to show before we begin with the lesson uh, one trick that I showed last time: the idea of how you can make the prompt of your terminal display whatever you want. Uh, and last time we did it with this um, command, basically caps ps one equals and something you could you could you know hardwire whatever you want here and the, the prompt will become that but uh, there are also some kind of keywords that you can use like backslash uppercase w will give you the working directory and i like finishing that with a dollar sign and then a space so i have a prompt that looks something like what you see now but uh, the problem with that approach is that you know when you close the terminal and then you open a new one then you are kind of all the, you know, have to do that thing again. So instead of, of doing that in a, in a temporary way, you can do that in a permanent way. And one way to do that is to pass that, to store that in a file called, um, it has to be in the um, home directory, which the home directory is, you know, is a shortcut for that is the tilde. And then the file has to be called dot, Profile, profile. So you can create a file and add that text there, or like a shortcut to doing that all in one at once could be something like this. What this command is doing, and again, you know, this is one, one excuse to also bring make you more familiar with the terminal. So this is like not Git, but it's, it's the terminal, and Git, of course, is a terminal tool. So the more fluent you are with the terminal, the more you can also get from Git, right? So let, let's discuss. Let's break down this little command. Uh, that is a terminal command. Echo will just, you know, spit whatever you give it. So what I'm giving to Echo is this command, uh, and I, I, you know, I the command I kind of wrap it in double quotes. PS1 equals, uh, and because I'm inside the, the double quotes, I want to create quotes again. I'm going to use single quotes. Um, so backslash w dollar sign space. So if um, you know, if I just run that, I would get a response on the terminal that just prints PS1 equals what I put there. But instead, I want not to send it to the terminal, I want to send it to a file. So how I say that, okay, with these greater than symbols, I send the command to a file. Uh, and with, with one greater than, you overwrite the file. And with do two greater thans, you add what you're adding to the end of the file. So you're not overwriting, you are appending the file. So that's a terminal trick. And in particular, the command, I want it to live in a file called .profile that has to be in the, um, in the home directory. So this is, you know, this is the home, right? And then slash .profile. So let's do that. As you can see, uh, I'm standing here on our studio uh, pane in the files pane. You can see now that that profile file has been added somewhere here at the end here. So if I open that file, you can see that the file contains a string that I gave it to it. So for you, it would have been exactly the same to navigate to your home directory and to create a new file and just call that file dot add profile. So that's exactly the same thing. I can now close the file. It lives there. So if I close the terminal now and open a new one, which I do with keyboard shortcut shift alt T, as you can see, the terminal now shows my current working directory, which is the, the, um, the default working directory where um, our Studio Cloud kind of draws me in. But I don't want to be there. I want to be somewhere else. So let's see. Uh, where I want to be is uh, I want to first change directory with CD, change directory to home. Uh, now I can do ls to list you know, what files and, and directories I have there. And as you can see, I have a, a folder called recipe. So that's exactly the project that we are working in this lesson. So I'm going to change directory, CD, change directory into recipe. And now I can do a less inside recipe and I have the files that we have been working with last time. So this in particular is a Git repository. I don't see the .git uh, folder yet because ls doesn't show hidden files. But if I do minus a, I do see 
hidden files there or hidden folders too, which are the ones that are prefixed with the dot symbol, right? So now I can see that there is a dot git folder and that is precisely what it, this, what it makes this to be a git repository. That folder is what defines the git repository. Okay, so we are here um, at, uh, at a good starting point. But also because uh, you know we are also in, in a very cool interface to work with Git, which is our studio or our studio cloud. I'm going to change the directory so that the pane here uh, shows uh, the same information that I see on the terminal. So there is a number of ways to do that. Uh, you could you could just click here in the dot 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 and say, well, I want to be on recipe, you know, home recipe, and it will change there. But there is also you know you can go to session set working directory and then you can you know choose the directory where you want to leave and then choose it that yeah. both things will take you to the same place and finally i'm going to show you one last trick before we actually get into the gate section which is uh, notice that you know our studio and our studio cloud in particular are um you know very strongly um, um uh, related to this dot uh, r proj file that we don't have in our project so let's create that. Um, in uh, in a desktop application, you could you could have an option to create a new project, but because we are in our Studio Cloud, we don't have that option. So instead, I'm going to use use this. Uh, I want to uh, um, use Git. So I tell um, sorry, use our Studio our Studio. I'm going to tell use this to uh, look into the current working directory and to use. Uh, R Studio, which for you know all it means is that it added this file called recipe.rproject. It knows the name because it just read the name from the parent directory where I'm standing at, and also added a few other things like this folder and this uh, git ignore file. So now um, I, sh I you know one thing I could do is to click on that button on that um, file because it has special properties. As soon as I click on it, the session will restart in that project. Um, and uh, and now the project will have, for example, information about Git. That's why I clicked on it. So as you can see now, my Git pane here now shows, for example, these two files that are files that have been added, but that the Git is still not tracking. So all that uh, this long explanation is to get you to this point where you know what I want to show you now is how the the, the knowledge that you already have. The knowledge about, for example, the Git pane in RStudio relates to how we have been interacting with Git from the terminal. So basically, if I now jump to the terminal, I do that with a keyboard shortcut, Shift Alt T. Uh, remember, I could clear the console with Control L or with the command clear, and I could always be able to ask for a status like Git status. Remember. So Git status now gives me the information that I have this file. Dot called dot git ignore and this file called recipe dot approach that have been added to the working tree so it's they're having added to my folder right to my computer but git is still not tracking them remember from last time that another way to show this in a more compact way was to use the minus s flag so this way of, of expressing what i'm saying is very similar to what our studio shows in the git pane so now, you know, the idea is that, you know, as a way to start building your mental model, hopefully you are already familiar with some uh, graphical user interface to interact with Git, like for example, the Git pane in our studio. And you are used to seeing this information here, like a file uh, with a question marks icon signaling that Git doesn't know, so it knows that the file exists in your, in your folder, but it's not yet being tracked. So this is exactly the information that we get with git status minus s, right? Exact same information. And when we click here in the box, it is the same thing. If I do a git status minus s again, it is the same, uh, the same effect that I would get if I had typed git add and the name of the file. In this case, it could be git ignore. But if I ask for the other file, the recipe, and I remember like, I always use the tab, so I, I can type res, rec, and then tab, and auto completes. So now that should have added the recipe approach file to the staging area too. Why I don't see it here in the pane? Because I haven't refreshed. If I do refresh, I, you can see that what I did on the terminal is the same thing that checking the box, 
right? So automatically, you know, was checked when I refreshed. So this is a little bit of a review from what we did um, last time. Uh, what I'm going to do is kind of actually complete all that we did last time uh, by creating a commit. You know, in our studio, you know, we have been doing it from the commit button, but now we, you know, we are practicing with the terminal. So let's go ahead and do it there. Uh, remember, you know, we use the command git commit. And if we uh, say nothing else than that, uh, that we will get uh, dropped into um, a text editor. Uh, the default for our studio cloud is this kind of awkward looking text editor. It's called Vim. Uh, and here, if you want to start typing, you first need to type the, uh, the letter I. That the letter I will uh, put you in, a, in an insert mode, as the message here suggests. And now that I'm in, in an insert mode, I can start typing something like add, um, you know, our brush, brush infrastructure, right? Uh, and, you know, that's my commit. I could, uh, you know, create a space and then uh, add some more information, but I don't have anything else to say. So I'm just going to type, the, the, uh, to press the escape key. That takes me out of the insert mode. And now my keyboard is no longer a keyboard as you know it. Now it is a command pad, basically. So if I now type shift uh, column, as you can see, I, I'm not inserting stuff up here, but instead I'm inserting stuff here in the commands area of, of Vim. The way you save a file is with the W, uh, and I could run just that, um, but instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press again escape, column, W and Q, because I want to quit this file. And once I save a file and I quit it, uh, the commit will be, um, you know, realized, really. So if I refresh here my git pane, you will see that now the staging area is clean because the commit has been done. I could also click the history and see, uh, you know, the latest commit that I have added, it's here. And the same effect we could get with what we learned last time, which is with git, actually, I don't remember if we did git log. Did we, anyone remember having seen git log, like git log one line, for example? No? Okay. So git log, um, it gives me information about um, the commits that I have in the history, which is the same thing than going to the git pane and clicking here in view history of previous commits, right? So I have two commits, right? And I have here two commits. By default, I get a long form and I can ask for a shorter, more succinct form with one line. There's many other also formats that you can use. Let me clear this up and run that again with the up arrow, I record the last command, and here we are. Okay, so do we have any uh, comments or questions? This was you know, mostly like a review and showing you a few tricks and mostly trying to build that mental model by relating uh, the graphical user interface that, use, that um, our studio provides with you know the commands that we type on the terminal. So a little pause here. Do we have any any questions? We are good to go. Excellent. All right. So uh, let's then um, start working with an exercise. Uh, I mentioned that in in the previous meetups. Um, this way we are structuring these um, lessons is. Uh, is so that I, I, I move like really slow, I explain a lot of things. Um, and, I, I, and, and if you want, you know, you can type on the fly and kind of follow along. Uh, or you can also go back to this lesson later and practice yourself, which you may prefer. So you can focus on the lesson. But what I'm not doing is I'm not stopping, you know, for any time to, for you to work on your own right now. So I kind of working along with you. And I invite you to do that if you want. So let's, go, let's, let's uh, uh, do this exercise that the lesson proposes. Uh, the idea is that, you know, we have a file called ingredients and we have a file called instructions. We could review them, what they look like. This is what they look like. And we are uh, asked to add uh, half onion as an ingredient to the file ingredients. So we can navigate to the file ingredients if we wanted, create a new line and add half onion. We save the file 
And you can see that, you know, the git pane already knows about this file here. And the same thing would happen if I ask for a git status short here. This file has been modified, right? Uh, and uh, because that's exactly what we did. We can close it now. And then we also need to uh, add instruction enjoy to the file instructions. So let's go to the file instructions, create a new line, enjoy. I'm gonna remove these quotes because they don't look good to me. It looks like some kind of artifact from, from the render HTML. So I'm gonna save this file. And as you can see, it appears already here in the in the git pane. And also if I do now a git status where I'm gonna recover the last command with the app arrow, you see that these two files have been modified. Okay, and now we are gonna start talking about a new command, a new for these um, lessons, uh, which is git diff. It's a very useful uh, command. Uh, and also I'm gonna start you know, talking about um, how to um, understand a um, help file when the help file is a bit more complex than the one I showed you last time. So git diff does a lot of things. Uh, and this is you know, one way to introduce you uh, to the complexity of Git. Sometimes one of the reasons why Git is kind of difficult to grasp is because the same command does a lot of things, that, or, uh, does different things depending on the context. So Git diff, uh, in this context, uh, in the context where we have files that have been modified, but they are not yet added to the staging area, it will just give us the difference between the files as they are in the Git repository, that is the latest commit, and the current state of those files uh, in the working tree. And the working tree is, you know, think of it as just your folder. So the files exist in the Git repository in a different state, in a previous state, but I have just modified them by adding, you know, one line to each of those files. So there is a difference between this modification that I have just done and the files as they were recorded last time by Git. So if I, if I type git diff, what I get is, let me expand this, what I get is for each file, in this case ingredients, I get the line added, that's why you have a plus symbol, in green, the line that I added. And for um, the instructions, the instruction enjoy. So same thing you would get if you click on the diff icon on the tab, uh, on the um, git tab, and you would you know, navigate to each file and you could see the same information that we get on the terminal. Hopefully with this, you know, I, um, comparing your experience from the graphical user interface to the experience that you get on the terminal, hopefully you will start uh, to be able to kind of understand what's happening. I, in my, to my taste, you know, there is too much information on, on the terminal output. Uh, but, you know, once you get used to it, you will know what to look for. Basically, in this case, you are looking just for that green line that tells you what, what has been modified. And you can, you know, in your brain, basically be blind to all the rest clutter that you get there. But that's not the only thing that Git uh, diff does. Uh, remember, we can always get a help file with the command help after the command that you want to query the help about. So if we ask for the help about git diff, you will see that in the synopsis, there is many lines. Each line is one of these modes, as I kind of introduced the idea uh, to you. Uh, each, is, each of those lines um, you know, res, re, uh, reflects one uh, way in which git diff uh, behaves depending on the context. So each line is a different context. So as you can see, for example, this uh, here, uh, this form, as it is called in the help file, uh, it is to view the changes that you have made relative to the index, being the index, you know, something that you have, uh, I, here it says, the staging area for the next commit. Uh, in other words, the, different, uh, the differences are what you could tell Git to further add to the index, but you still haven't. And you can stage these changes with git add. So this little piece of text corresponds to, you know, calling git diff with maybe some options, but no commit. Uh, and directly, if you want, you can also use uh, this syntax here to separate the git diff with a path. A path is just the direction of a file in your system. What am I talking about? Okay, let's exit this with Q. Let's clear the console. 
and let's uh, review what we did with git diff. When I did git diff, it gave me information over the two files. But what if I wanted a git diff for one file? Okay, git diff and many, many, many uh, commands in git have the path option where you can tell which specific, specific file, for example, ingredients, you have to press tab, you want to, uh, that command to apply to. So if I run, instead of git diff, if I run git diff and then a path to a file, then I get the information specifically for that file. And this is important not just in the, in, in the context of git diff, you know, I'm introducing you to this idea that you can almost any, almost every uh, command in git, you have a path option, you can commit a specific file, you can ask for a git diff of a specific file, you can add a specific file to the staging area. So this is extremely powerful and you can even reset a file from a, a previous um, version in the history, like for example, how Jacob did it recently, he had reset an entire folder, for example, from uh, you know the past, basically. So you know when you want to re re recover things from the past, you know being able to express which path, which folder, which specific file you want the command to apply, that is a very powerful, uh, very powerful idea that is ubiquitous across Git commands. And this minus minus command is not compulsory most of the times. Uh, that's why the, the help file showed it like, with, the, with the square brackets. But it is kind of nice to have because it, it, it disambiguates um, the command. Sometimes you know, it, is, it is not clear. Git doesn't understand what you mean uh, if you do uh, this. So, and also it's kind of visually a really nice cue to tell Git you know, how to, uh, you know, what, what you really mean. Um, okay, so we run git diff here. Do we have any question uh, about um, you know git diff right now at this at this stage? No. Okay, good. We, we, we continue then to um, explore the lesson, uh, and now we are gonna stage and commit each file or each change separately. And and you know this is this is you know what uh, it is we are proposed uh, to do. So git status minus s. To re remember what we have, uh, what we are being asked to do is to do a git add for each file. Let's do ingredients. Remember, uh, I think it should also work probably this way, and it does, yeah. Uh, and uh, now we could do a commit. Right, so if we do now git status minus s, we should see that the only file that is ready to be committed is ingredients. Instructions is still not ready to be committed. You know, that's why you know it's both are being modified, but one is in green because it's in the staging area, ready to be added to the next commit. So let's add that to the next commit. Git, git commit, and you know to avoid going to the awkward interface of uh, Vim, I prefer to do the minus m flag, which tells I'm going to write a message right here, and then I open quotes and say. Um, I have another. Uh, I know, uh, actually enjoy. Yeah. Uh, git status again, minus S. We are left with just one file. And now I'm gonna do something a little different. So let's do, um, if I want to add and commit the file at the same time, there is kind of a shortcut for that, which is just to say git commit. And I'm gonna use the minus M flag again and now in instructions i'm gonna say add half onion and now i i'm going to intentionally add give the path so if you do give a path git commit behaves as git commit followed sorry as git add followed by a git commit that's you know just one you know, i'm just bringing this up it's not even in the lesson but you know just to kind of ex to show how sometimes Again, to kind of expose the complexity and benefits of Git. Uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, you find yourself that the terminal is kind of awkward and you're typing a lot. And sometimes that just means that, you know, like, like Alex suggested last time, maybe, you, just, you know, you, you, you could benefit from using aliases or maybe you could use these commands that do more than one thing. So let's do that. Uh, so we commit and a specific path. The file is first added to the staging area 
and then committed. So that's why I, I wasn't prompt to, you know, to anything else. So I can do now a git uh, log with one line, one line. I can see, you know, what I've done before. And here you can see, um, you know, my two latest commits. Add half an onion and enjoy. So I have um, core this area here. We also have left, uh, we also have, a sh I have shown how to not use the minus M flag to kind of be dropped into this awkward um, text editor. Um, we have explored the log with the command git log and I'm gonna show one uh, last command before we finish, which, which is git show. Git show is the same thing as git log. So if I do git log, you get you know, all the commits and the messages. Uh, but if you do git show, you get only one commit, which is the latest one. Let me clear this up and show you again. So git show is a shortcut for git log uh, and asking to filter the entire log to show you just the last command. Um, and git show also shows you the changes to the files that you touch in that last commit by default. If you wanted to do that with git log, you could do it too, but you, you, you would need to do uh, the minus patch. Minus patch will give you the changes to the log. So if you do just git log, remember you just get the commits. If you get git log minus minus patch or minus p, usually the flags have a long form and a short form. With a short form, you get something very similar to what you got with a show. If you wanted to do it almost exactly the same, then you can say, I think it's n equals one, and there you are. So git log minus p minus n one gives you exactly the same thing that you get with git show, as you can see here, right? So many ways of doing the same thing. The same concept happens in any computer language. In R, for example, there is not just one way of doing one thing. There is many ways to do that. And uh, we are going to leave it at that. If you want to explore your own time, you can see other ways of using git diff in other modes, depending on other contexts. Um, and I encourage you uh, to do that. And we're going to be resuming next lesson uh, here. Uh, it's time to leave, but uh, I would like to see if uh, there is any question or comment before we go. Oh, okay, then see you next time. Thanks for joining me. Ciao, ciao.